Hi everyone, welcome back to Toxic Tuesday. I hope you've all been having a wonderful week. Mine has been quite busy actually. There's been some movement on my house, which I'm really, really excited about. So a few more months and I should be able to move in, which is super exciting. For those of you who are new here, my name is Bethany Bugin and every Tuesday I do an episode called Toxic Tuesday, where I talk about a toxic plant that you may find in your backyard and we learn a little bit more about it. And on today's episode, we are looking at Dendrochnide, Dendrochnide moroidus is more commonly known as Gimpy Gimpy here in Australia. It is a perennial understory shrub that is a member of the nettle family Urticaceae. It can grow in size from 3 to 4 metres and is very similar looking to its closely related cousin Dendrochnide cordifolia. It has broad oval or heart shaped leaves with toothed margins and a pointed tip and they range in size from 12 to 20 centimeters long and 11 to 18 centimeters wide. There are six to eight lateral veins that go along the mid vein, which is the main vein going up the leaf, and the stalk is connected to the underside, not the base. The flowers are clustered and born off the main stem of the plant and generally contain both male and female flowers and are less than one centimetre long. The fruit of the Gimpy Gimpy is similar to a mulberry and ranges from a pink to a light purple in colour. All parts of this plant, from the stem and the leaves through to the flowers and the fruit, are covered in these very fine stinging hairs. These hairs are the reason that the Gimpy Gimpy is on our list today. Gimpy Gimpy loves rainforests. It's found in Indonesia and in Australia, it's found from the south of the Cape York Peninsula in Queensland, all the way down through to Northern New South Wales. Now, although it is common in Queensland, it's actually listed as an endangered species in New South Wales. It can be found along watercourses, roads, tree fells and man-made clearings. While Gimpy Gimpy is the host plant for the larva of the white nymph butterfly and the fruit is eaten by red-legged patamelons, it is not recommended to have this plant in your garden due to the significant health risk that it poses. So the Gimpy Gimpy is notorious for its extremely painful sting and is actually believed to be the most venomous plant in Australia, if not the world. This is due to the victims of the Gimpy Gimpy experiencing intense stinging and burning upon contact. This intensifies over the next 20 to 30 minutes at the site of contact and can last for hours to days or even longer, depending on the type of contact before it begins to subside. Victims reportedly get very little sleep during this time and are known to contract hives. The lymph glands under the arms can swell and become painful and may require hospitalization. Now we can't talk about this plant without discussing how it is so venomous and it's all to do with those hairs that are covering the entirety of the plant. These fine yet extremely brittle hairs are filled with a cocktail of toxins that embed into the skin on the slightest contact. These hairs can stay embedded in the skin for up to a year or more, and the toxins can be triggered to be released with any kind of physical touch to the affected area, a change in temperature, or even having contact with hot or cold water. Physical contact is also not the only way for these toxins to affect the human body. The Gimpy Gimpy tree actually sheds these hairs so they can be breathed in. Breathing in these hairs can cause sneezing, swollen tongue or throat, watery eyes and nose, nose bleeds, and major respiratory damage. It's been reported that allergies have been developed after breathing in these hairs, and also having sore throats almost similar to tonsillitis. The toxins don't lose their painful power either when the leaves fall. If you pick up any piece of the tree that has fallen and is brown and looks dead, the toxins are actually still active. And if you touch it, you will experience the same symptoms as if you were touching the tree itself. The best remedy for the afflicted area is to actually put down tape. And this is like a really sticky kind of a tape, kind of like duct tape, and actually peel the hairs off from the affected area. It's important that this is done as quickly as possible though, due to the fact that the hairs are so fine that your skin is likely to close over them, therefore trapping them and making removal impossible. Now I have been saying toxins a fair bit in regards to the Gimpy Gimpy tree and haven't actually specified what the toxins are. And there's a good reason for this. 
at the time of this recording, they don't actually know what the toxins are that are in the gimpy gimpy that cause it to have this effect on the human system. Early studies suggest a variety of compounds such as histamine, acetylcholine, 5-hydroxytryptamine and formic acid could be responsible. However, none of these have been proven to produce a similar intensity or pain duration as what you would get by a sting from the gimpy gimpy. Now us Aussies love to have a good yarn and we have topics on everything and the gimpy gimpy is no exception. If you talk to any Aussie, they will be able to tell you the story about the bloke who actually used the gimpy gimpy leaf as toilet paper. Now after hearing everything that occurs with, upon contact with this particular plant, you can only imagine the horrific pain that this poor guy was in. While I was researching this though, I did actually find some documents by uh, Dr. Marina Hurley, who actually researched the stinging trees and also the animals that eat the plant without succumbing to its dangerous touch. I did find a quick PDF which I've popped in the description box down below. So if you're interested in having a read, I did find it very much to the point. I also found a first-hand account by a gentleman by the name of Ernie Ryder. In 1963, he was unfortunate enough to be smacked in the face, arms and chest by a stinging tree. He said, and I quote, I remember feeling like there were giant hands trying to squash my chest. For two or three days, the pain was almost unbearable. I couldn't work or sleep, then it was pretty bad pain for a fortnight or so. The stinging persisted for two years and reoccurred every time I had a cold shower. He then went on to further explain, there's nothing to rival it. It's 10 times worse than anything else. Scrub ticks, scrub itch and itchy jack sting included. Stinging trees are a real and present danger. So if you go for a bushwalk in the Australian rainforest, make sure you stick to the path where are the appropriate clothing required and don't touch anything. That is everything today, guys, on Dendrochnide Moroidus. Chuck us a comment down below on what you learnt today or if you have any stories yourself about what this plant has done. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thank you, as always, for spending some of your day with me. It is always appreciated. And I will see you all on the next episode of Toxic Tuesday. Have a lovely week, guys. Stay safe and keep on learning. Bye.